And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Monday, April 1st, 2024. As the market begins to open here in Globex, we're basically still going nowhere. The market was very difficult today compared to how Globex opened yesterday, gapping higher, continuing to go higher, reaching up to a resist resistance level, <clears throat> excuse me, that would have been consistent with an upward move. Then it kind of spent the rest of uh, Globex and then our session in the beginning by just getting hammered back down below 18,450. Now, what is the market attempting to do? I mean, truly, folks, this final, I'm, I'm here on the four-hour chart, and I'm looking at the final minor fifth wave. And I know I get a lot of comments, and a lot of people are still like, you know, oh, they're going to cut rates, and so we're just going to go to the moon. But you would believe that there'd be something else to show some strength here. So my point is, is that the market is basically a mess right now. We're seeing different stocks pick up a bid based on some AI news. And I'm serious, like Google today, going in with or got a big order or something with a smaller artificial intelligence player, a CXII or something of that nature. And suddenly that stock was up uh, from 250 to 550. So it was up a, a decent percentage today. And suddenly Google catches a bid and closes up 450. Um, so that's what's kind of motivating the trading right now. We're seeing that basically Apple, okay, okay. That expiration's over. Now we're going to move back below 170. Uh, NVIDIA, really conflicted. Are we going to go up? Should we go down? So it does both. Uh, Microsoft putting in a fair day. Meta putting in a fair day, but cannot hold on to these strong gains that are coming through. That continues to demonstrate, at least to me, folks, on a near-term basis, not forever, but a near-term basis, we have a lot of stocks that on a cyclical basis over the near term remain in a bullish posture. Overall, the indexes still remain somewhat in a bullish posture. But we have entered, as I mentioned over the weekend, a period of weakness. And so we're beginning to see these signs, particularly here in the NASDAQ, of weakness forming. And today we saw the Dow kind of like take it on the chin. We saw the Russell take it on the chin now, kind of trying to bounce back again. So it, it, it's, it makes sense and it doesn't make sense because we are seeing a lot of money get moved around. Now, here we are, beginning of April. And what happens? Well, we get that new 401k, IRA money coming in. And it's not that it's brand new. It's just the same players. It's just here's this month's allocation to be put out and to be put into the market. So I would suspect that we're going to get uh, some stronger upside moves like we did today. The market did manage, you know, to put a good move in after the Globex. We still went in. We saw in the S&P that it actually went up and finished the third. So getting back here to the NASDAQ, that's why I actually, I actually moved it before the close. But I brought the market down and thought, okay, right there. That's where I'm going to put this minute wave three. It did produce a new high, which was required. Wave one is a tremendous wave. It is the one that is coming in. It is actually the longest. And so, yeah, I get that, that wave three should not be the shortest wave. So I have still a little bit of, of move here where I could go over and put the one down here and then put this as a wave two and then put this A, B, C for wave three. I could. I'm not 
because I got to let this play out. Now, this all could move right back. We come in tomorrow and they jack it and they take it above 18,700 and get it above and put it up to a new high. We have that continued resistance up above, I think at 18,000, we'll call it 18,825 uh, or 768 up in there. I believe we also have some resistance. So there is there is resistance up here if the market should turn and find, and particularly the NASDAQ, find where it's got that bounce, then yeah, then we could go very quickly. Now, granted also today, European markets were closed. They have a four-day holiday wrapped around the Easter weekend. So we had one. That was Friday. And Good Friday was really, it's a Good Friday holiday, but it's not because of you know, that it's the Easter weekend. I believe that the way that I've always heard is that some point in time, there was a crash on Good Friday. It was not 1929, but there was a crash on Good Friday and hence, uh, you know, so whatever, they give the day off, we all take it. Now, so this is how I'm going to count it for right now. And if this is the case, then what I've put on is for that a little bit larger four. Because now I'm expecting that now in the S&P. I'm expecting that a little bit larger four to kind of kick in and start to come down. And probably the same thing is happening in the Russell and probably also in the Dow. So we get them all together and we all rise together to the occasion when we're done here. Now, where can the market go according to the fibs here? Well, what we got is we've got a W, X, Y, X, Z to form wave A of four. Instead of all of fours, I had marked it before of a smaller degree, it's A of a minute wave four. And then this, minute wave B, because where did we come? We came down, we broke too far back below. So I'm A, a B, and we're likely in a C wave. Now I'm going to bring that down, put it back on the hourly. Let's see what it looks like inside. And you can see there's the high. So we get this, what, one, what, that, I don't know. And then it does this right after. So you can see just massive total confusion. This was the opening. So here we have yesterday, then we come down all the way, we come down into here, and then they just buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. And that was actually the money-making move, folks. This one, yeah, it, yeah, it also was. But this was the money-making move because it was nonstop. This was starting to go and cough and sneeze and all the way up and down. But this, straight up. Then it just kind of came back down. Now we're moving back up again. So if anything, it's a, it's a one, two, three. And, and maybe we're going to come down in a four. Maybe we'll get to 18,357. That's our next level. We broke 382. Down 387. And we have 18,274. Now, bringing it back out to that four-hour chart, you may ask, well, wait a minute. Where does all this really start to overlap? Oh, that's wave one and this is wave four. It's been overlapping the whole time. It never got, you know, above, except right at the very absolute beginning where it was like starting to overlap. So it's been overlapping the entire, the entire move. So, but I don't think that it can break below what we're going to count as the triangles border, the trend line. And so that's going to be right now, we're kind of crying 18,275 ish. But I would not, I would not really want it to come all the way down and start breaking here because then again, as I've talked about on over the weekend, and I talk about it again, we still have where if the if true weakness kind of kicks in and finally the market picks up and then it goes like stop buying. You know, hold on a second. You're gonna get it back because but we need to correct. And again, this is not, I don't think that we're finished, finished. We're close, but I don't think it's finished, finished yet. But, but if it is, it's not going to go straight down. I think from here, we will feel as if we're going straight down because I think they they surrender 18,000 pretty quick and likely 17,000 pretty quick. And then we play inside there. And we come down in a wave one and then we start to bounce back up in a wave two. And that's all going to take time as the market really tries to play this all out and continue to put in all well, the Fed, the Fed, the Fed. So that I don't think is going to go away any anytime soon. But I think they're going to continue to have trouble 
uh, passing the same narrative along, like, well, you know, we're still on track, da, blah, blah, blah. So we think we're going to cut maybe three times this year. Well, okay, so now we're going to go, and now we're talking June. So half the year will have been gone. So you're going to cut three times between June and December? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? So right now, I'm going to focus on what I got going on right in front of me. And so if I bring it all the way down to the 15 minute and I open it up so that I can see what's going on in here, you can see it was pretty messy. But this move was tradable. This move was tradable. This one, eh, you know, then I got a little sloppy and I just let it go because I'm like, well, lower volumes today because of Europe being closed. So we had that participation was not available to us. And so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Now from this, doesn't it look like three up? So we're probably going to get a downward leg. And then maybe, if it, here's our support. First of all, we got support at 18,440. But here at 26, and then again here at 1516. Then again here, this is all price supports, 396, 390. And then down at this low at 377, which is from last week. And then we have FIB support at 18,358, down to 55-ish, down in that area. And it could just come swing, done, and then run. And that would be, that would actually be appropriate to the whole picture. Get down, finish that four, run up. And again, because we're still going to have this really stronger downward cyclical pressure, the market could run up and that's it. It's fast and it gets there, done, and then it reverts and it starts heading lower again. So it's going to be difficult. And it's going to be interesting. Now, again, the type of trading that you do, mm, it's tough because there's all kinds of things going on. If you're a position trader, I think you have to start to look at what you want to do pushing out. But if you're a position trader and you're thinking that we're going to get another run up, well, I would think that even if that is the case, and I mean a major run up, we need a major drop first, a major corrective on the same degree that you're thinking it should go up, it should correct a little bit here. There's a lot of excess. And this NASDAQ, when we're looking at the other two major, like well, even the Dow, the other three, NASDAQ, S&P, and the Russell, this is weakening. The NASDAQ is weakening. And it's now that, that it's still that handful of stocks that starts. You know, it's again, booking today. Again, whack it, get it down 60 bucks. Granted, it trades at $3,500. But still, that's a chunk, and it affects the index. All right, moving averages stuck, stuck in the muck. I'm going to say right now the 200 is flat, and the 13 is down following the downside along with the 20, and the 50 is kind of like rolling over as well. So again, weakness being shown there, and that's on an hourly chart. Let's go over and look at the ES. ES... Here, I just don't need to really go much further, but I will. I'll start out here in the four-hour chart real quick, and we'll take a look at this. And you can see it's very nice. We got a one. We have a two. One, two, three, four, five. The three, it got up there today. Got up there today after the... Actually, this came up. But no, this is not from today. This is from the 31st. This is from yesterday yesterday on the globex open it ran up and put in it put in the high i had to i didn't actually look at it yesterday i was checking on the nasdaq sorry s and I did you deserve better in any case it came in and put the the what i'm counting as the minute three because we were looking for a minuet wave five got it All right one two three four five nice Put this in, put the minute three, we're in a minute four. Now this fits to the letter T. This fits the letter to how that weakness that I've been discussing for, and a cyclical weakness in the S&P and in the spiders. Now the spiders, well, I'm not sure where they closed today. I need to kind of put this up a little bit. Uh, 521, and again, they were up, up touching... Uh, 523 to 524. And I think if they would have been trading yesterday, I think they would have been like 525, 526, somewhere in there. They still have that potential for one last final pop uh, to get up, and that would be in minute wave five. 
But right now we have a minute fourth wave coming in. And so what do we have? We have support where it came down and tested at 5284. And then I got the 50. This is the four hour 50 sitting right underneath. It came down, it's holding. Going a little flat, but it's holding. So we'll see what happens from there. A continuation of this fourth wave, which suggests that we're going to come down to the fourth wave of one lesser degree, which is the minuet. And that's down here, again, touching the 50, but lower at 5260. And then we have fifth support at 5254. That is a pretty good area to put in the four. We run up in a five and then we do a larger, we do a larger start to something bigger, but that also would then coincide with the cycle pressure that's being put on to the downside as we begin, as we put in maybe that first wave of many to the downside. Remember, it's not gonna go straight down. And they, there's not, they're not gonna give up. The rally one that started in October, 2023, but the other, larger that started in October of 2022. Nobody's going to walk away from this this quickly. It's going to take a while for it to filter through and all it to work. Don't forget, two weeks, two weeks, we start the uh, earnings cycle again. So we'll see. We'll see. So I don't think they're going to be knocking it too hard in advance of what, you know, some of these expectations might be for earnings. So here in the S&P, again, I've put, I put the three. So we got minute one, two, and three. I'm looking for minute four, minute five to complete minor five, to complete intermediate wave C, and to complete primary wave B. And I know a lot of people want to argue about, you know, the count versus another count. When am I going to change my mind and, and move out? It's like, well, it actually probably is going to take a while because no matter what, if this is finishing five up and, and we're going to co correct, if it's finishing in an immediate third wave, so to speak, and we're going to come down in a fourth wave, it's that fourth wave that will make or break which count it's going to be. Is it is it the one that I'm saying, a primary B wave coming down in a primary C wave, which will also be five waves down to begin, three waves up the secondary move, and then another five waves down. If this is a fourth wave, it should be an ABC, a larger ABC. And I'll, and I'll measure it out. Once it is complete, we can measure it out and I can show you how far down it's got to come before you're able to say, no, the highs are in and now we're going. Or, nope, that was a four and we're going to go up and we're going to break it again. So no matter what, Calling it now does not suggest that, okay, we're going to go up to 55 or 56 or 6,000 now. That's not. So I don't want anybody being confused about that. That's not any being suggested anywhere, at least not by me. Because no matter what, if, even if it's going to be a one, and I'm not liking it even that because it's a strange count, a one, two, and this is the third uh, an intermediate third, and it's going to have the same five waves of minor degree, of which we're close to finishing. All right, so maybe we do get up towards 5,500, and then we turn around and we come back down. Right now, I got 5,485 sitting up there waiting to be hit. So again, it's going to take time. But in the meantime, yep, one more high, and then we begin to correct. And when the cor correction kicks in, it's going to bring it back down below 5,000. For sure, for sure, it should be expected to come back below 5,000. We'll work out those numbers. And then we're going to have to wait and see. All right? How does it correct and what the moves will be? All right. That's basically where I'm going to be it for today. Let me double check because it's kind of a big week for um, economic data, but in terms of jobs. So tomorrow, Tuesday, April the 2nd, we have factory orders at 10 a.m. Eastern. Also job openings. Then we have a slew of three uh, Fed governors and presidents out talking. And then throughout the day, we have U.S. auto sales going to come in. So if you trade any of the automakers, you're going to want to pay attention to that. Big one will be those the 10 a.m. factory orders and job openings. Uh, and then Wednesday, we have ADP employment at 8.15 a.m. And then uh, S&P U.S. Services PMI final. The ISM services, all uh, before 10 a.m.
So that's also good. And then the big ones are Friday, Thursday and Friday, actually, but Friday, U.S. non-farm payrolls. So a lot on payrolls and jobs and things this week. All right, that's going to be it. Our next update will be on Tuesday, April the 2nd.